Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Al-Fatihah bi niyyati ma wa aslafna salihin wa bi anna Allaha yanawwiru qulubana wa qawalibana ma'at tuqa wal huda wal afaf wal ghina wal maut ala din al-islam wal iman bila mihnati wa lam tihan. Bi haqqi sayyidi wa ladi adnan wa li kulli niyyatin salihah wa ila hadrati an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallam wa ila arwahi azwaji rasulillahi at-tahirati ummati al-mu'minin wa ila arwahi سادتنا الخلفاء الراشدين وإلى أرواح سادتنا الأئمة المجتهدين والعلماء العاملين وسوفية المحققين وأهل الذكر والتوحيد ومشايخ هذه الأمة لأن الله يغفر لهم ويرحمهم ويعلى درجاتهم في الجنة وينفعنا بأسرارهم وأنوارهم وعلومهم ونفحاتهم في الدين والدنيا والآخرة الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, first of all I suppose before beginning on our discussion this evening uh, on metaphysics uh, and Islam uh, can I please know if <coughs> uh, if you can hear me Well, I take it that uh, that I, I I hope that you can hear me then, inshallah. At any rate, uh, the topic that we wish to discuss this evening, metaphysics of Islam, uh, is certainly not not a topic that we might be discussing every day, or perhaps even um, not one of those uh, discussions which is. Um, casually uh, held without proper say intellectual philosophical training but nevertheless um, I thought of attempting this uh, giving an overview uh, based on the book of our teacher Professor Wan Muhammad Noor and the rest of the things that we have been reading uh, from the writings of our scholars any rate, at any rate uh, to to begin the discussion about metaphysics, let us see what, what this discussion is about, or meaning to say, what is the meaning of metaphysics. It is said that <coughs> um, the name metaphysics uh, was perhaps added by the, um, the Aristotelians. Uh, they were people, I mean, amongst the editors of the works of Aristotle or the lectures of Aristotle, uh, having looked at the and arranged the thought of Aristotle um, after having discussed elemental physics uh, of the nature of the world, uh, there were certain discussions that went beyond um, his, uh, his physics of the elements. And this certainly uh, perhaps contributes to the name of the title, Metaphysics meaning to say that which is beyond physics or after physics. Some uh, Muslim scholars or Arab scholars tried to render metaphysics in Arabic in its literal name, ma wara at what is behind the regularities, what is behind the physical world, what is beyond the realm of, say, appearance. And others, uh, like Ibn Sina, for example, and several other Muslim philosophers, metaphysicians and theologians, they prefer the term ilahiyat uh, that talks about um, God, the divinity or the divine. Uh, now these are some of the names which is applied to the discussion of metaphysics. Supposing we say, well, what if, uh, what about the, the modern world? Do we have a metaphysics? Um, well, either you are conscious or you are unconscious. Uh, there will be some notion of reality that is at the basis of all your judgment that is at the basis of all your evaluation of the world. So that kind of metaphysics, um, ultimately, as Professor Nakib Alatas has said, will depend on what you consider to be ultimately true and real. Uh, perhaps for the modern West, they have left this question of what is true and real uh, to the realm of science, to the realm of empiricism, or what is the realm of sense experience, and scientific reasoning, or perhaps some of them allow for philosophical speculation based on the data of sense experience, based on the data of the studies of science. Now they, they arrange it into a worldview. Now that is what they call metaphysics in the present time. 
So then, if we were to ask that, uh, on the other hand, what is metaphysics with regards to the religion of Islam? How do Muslims understand the notion of reality? Um, what is real, anyways? So to, the an- to, to, to answer these questions, of course, <coughs> uh, with regards to Professor Nakib Alatas, uh, whose account is, is given here by pro- his student, Professor Wan Muhammad Noor, uh, the first thing that we have to be aware of is how seriously Professor Nakib Alatas takes the Quran. With regards to the religion of Islam, the ultimate source of what is true and real would be the Quran because we affirm revelation, uh, meaning to say uh, God's words. And in order to, 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 to properly do justice to revelation, to act with adab with regards to revelation, you must be aware that it is uh, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord who created uh, all that there is. Uh, he is the source of all being. An existence, shall we say. So therefore, uh, the method that is applied by Professor Nakib Alatas is a combination of uh, the proper under- uh, the proper meaning of tafsir and ta'wil, uh, commentary and exegesis of the Quran following the tradition of the scholars before him. So, um, briefly, uh, elements of uh, Islamic metaphysics will discuss of, of, uh, also the, the, the nature of God and the relationship between God and the world, the ultimate nature of the world as reality, as these are some of the, the elements which we would discuss in, in metaphysics. Let us, uh, I think it is important, I suppose, in order to understand the nature of what is true and real, uh, to look at the tradition of Islamic thought. I think this is a, 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 a good direction to look at because uh, the scholar, uh, uh, the scholars which Professor Nakib Alatas had, had studied in his youth, uh, which informed certainly his uh, elaborate account in his later works, was Sheikh Nuruddin Ar Raniri and Sheikh Hamza Al Fansuri. So Sheikh Nuruddin Ar Raniri, and um, uh, I'm I'm reminded to talk about this first by by Professor Zaini Uthman. Um, to discuss how your metaphysics is somehow also dependent on your epistemology, your theory of knowledge. Now let us look at the subject matter of metaphysics, which is God and the world. So for uh, Sheikh Nuruddin Ar-Raniri, he distinguishes between the, the method of the philosophers, the falasifa, the Sufis, um, which is sometimes translated as the metaphysicians, and the mutakallimun, the rational theologians or theologians that use the method of discursive reason, shall we say. First, he said, look at the account given by the, the theologians, the mutakallimun. The mutakallimun say about the world that since the mutakallimun built their metaphysics based on, uh, if you look at early accounts such as the Aqaid and Nasafi, they affirm, say, sense experience, they affirm reason, and they affirm authority or revelation as, as sources of knowledge. So with regards to sense experience, which they do not doubt, they experience the world to be something real, which is seen with the eye. So therefore, they affirm its existence. So they, they grant the provisional notion of existence to the world. But they also, using their reason and using authority, because they affirm the Quran to be revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they affirm the existence of God. Yes, through reason and revelation, they accept that there is God. So therefore, since uh, reason and revelation is um, synthesized, shall we say, into an epistemology, uh, uh, according each uh, source of knowledge, its proper place, they <coughs> distinguish between the being of the world and the being of God. God or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and the world is his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is necessarily existing and the world is contingent in terms of its existence. And by that uh, contingency is meant that it is a, a possible existence. And its existence, its coming into being, is a result of agen- the agency of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is God. In other words, 
the predication of existence to the world is a result of God's free choice of endowing the world with existence. So then therefore, they therefore affirm the existence of two separate beings. One which is necessarily existing, which is the source of two, which is the contingently existing, whose existence depends on uh, the necessarily existing. The world is, of course, uh, as they uh, contemplate about the world, they affirm several predicates about it. They, 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 they develop an atomistic metaphysics. Uh, so, the, for example, the theologians given, gave an account of, uh, 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 of, of the world being composed of atoms and substances. And out of the, uh, shall we say, uh, the atoms uh, and uh, the, the, the accidents, uh, when, when the atoms uh, are compounded as body, there are several accidents, meaning to say, secondary qualities they would have color they would have all the things that we see of the quality of the things existing so the the, the theologians uh, claim that god is neither accident nor substance god is not even uh, a, a body certainly because god i mean based on the the, the account of the quran that there is nothing which is akin to him so then this is the metaphysics of the theologians because they accept reason they accept revelation and the, the, uh, the, 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 the synthesis between the two gives us an account of the world uh, based on this metaphysics, shall we say. So there's the rationally existing, there is the, uh, or rather the necessarily existing, and then there is the, the world as it is. So be, given this metaphysics, uh, of course, the, 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 the account can be more and more elaborated. Uh, they, they, they developed this into a research program in which they considered questions about uh, the existence of a void, uh, in which the, 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 the atoms and accidents form bodies. They considered um, whether perhaps there was uh, temporal atoms on top of spatial atoms, and they, debel they, they developed this into an elaborate metaphysics. So basically, this is the notion of reality and truth. Uh, if you affirm revelation uh, in, in terms of its implication, and you affirm uh, reason. Uh, and this certainly means that the, the, the theologians also have some, some additional arguments because they would, uh, of course, in the, in the more logical accounts uh, like the uh, Umul Barahin uh, of as uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, even the Iqtisad fal of Imam al-Ghazali, in this theological text, they would labor uh, the arguments, yes, what is called the Kalam cosmological arguments and several other rational proofs which they use to demonstrate the, 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 the existence of this uncaused first cause, the necessarily existent being through which this world comes to be as it is. Now, this is one uh, major account of metaphysics. But Ar-Raniri doesn't stop there, certainly. Uh, Sheikh Nuruddin Ar-Raniri mentioned that, uh, like the theologians, the Sufis, and by this he means a, a particular tradition of Sufism, the one whose school perhaps can be attributed to the uh, to the teachings at first and foremost to Sheikh Junaid al Baghdadi, and he of course had his own uh, uh, had his own uh, sources, meaning to say in terms of teacher, until it reaches the the, the companions. But from the school of Junaid al Baghdadi, uh, <coughs> until it reaches uh, the, the 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 sanat or the silsila of Sheikh Nuruddin al Raniri, the Sufis affirm, of course, the exist uh, the, the 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 veracity of uh, report coming from sense experience, reason, and revelation. But they also affirm additional sources of knowledge, which is intuition. Uh, the one that has established intuition as a source of knowledge within the tradition of Islamic thought was Imam Al-Ghazali. Yes, he established the veracity of intuition as a source of knowledge, whereas the previous theologians, especially An-Nasafi, for example, he mentions that... Um, at least in the gener for the generality, ilham or intuition is not a source of knowledge. Uh, uh, Imam al-Ghazali and the later uh, theologians who are impacted by al-Ghazali affirm intuition also to be a source of knowledge, but only to an elect few, a select few, uh, those who have been trained uh, properly within the, the, the sharia and who has been practicing the sharia and several other requirements. Uh, uh, this, uh, and this sort of intuition also, it's not... It's not so something that you can be um, willful about. It is a, as a result of divine gift, ultimately. But in the end, the, the, the Sufis affirm uh, as parts of intuition what is called al-kashf and al-dhawq. 
uh, al kashf is spiritual unveiling and al dhawq which is uh, spiritual tasting so out of the affirmation of these sources of knowledge and within the the, 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 the the spiritual tradition of tasawwuf and of course contemplating deeply um, in the nature of the quran about certain verses about the nature of reality and truth they discern a more subtle metaphysics and what is this more subtle metaphysics while not being um, you know radically different from what the, the theologians propose the metaphysicians arrive at the notion that first while affirming God to be the uh, necessarily existing, they discuss the meaning of being in a more subtle manner. Being or wujud or rather that. What, what is the essence of something? So the, uh, as the nomenclature, the science developed further, the Sufis mentioned that, well, what does it mean to be? Supposing we ask that question. What, what does it mean to exist? Uh, so for the, the uh, Araniri opens that work, the Hujjah to Siddiq, by saying that, well, the constituent being of a thing, yes, of a shay, of, a, of, of, a, of an entity, is its entification, its ayn, its huwiya, its individuality. Yes? So to, to ask of the being of a thing is to ask for its entity, its nature as an entity, its individuation, its mahiya. It's quiddity. Uh, quiddity is the Latin translation of the Arabic mahia, which is rendered uh, in English uh, literally as the whatness of something, the answer to the question what, meaning to say how uh, uh, a being is understood in terms of its specific difference. The logicians, for example, when, when defining this, will say um, uh, with regards to a human being that he is a living being that speaks. A living being being one of its qualities, but the specific difference that distinguishes the human being from other um, living beings is that it has the capacity of speech, which is uh, evidence of something hidden, which is the, the, the power of the intellect or grasping meaning. So that's the Mahiya uh, and several other uh, characteristics that discuss a proper uh, being like that. So the... Metaphysicians, the Sufis, they, elaborate, they, they develop a, an, an, an elaborate account of metaphysics in which they argued ultimately the, the being or the, 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 the being that has properly uh, the characteristic or the, 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 the predicate of existence and essence ultimately is only God alone. Uh, it's God alone who possesses existence. But everything else that we see in this world, including trees and rocks and human beings and the intellect and the heart, uh, things material and immaterial like shaitan and, and angels and so on, everything that we, we perceive in, 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 in existence, these are limited. Yes, These suffer what is called taqayyud. These are limited. These are individuated. Ta'ayun. And they subsist within a limited form of existence. Uh, this is where, 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 with regards to the, metaphys uh, uh, the metaphysicians, the Sufis, in terms of their conception of reality and truth, they consider that every other being other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since the, the definition of the universe or the alam is kullu uh, shay'in ma Allah, every other being other than God. Al-alamu bi jami'i ajza'ihi, the universe in terms of all its... In, entire constituent part according to the theologians is new meaning to say it's so this is the, 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 the theological formulation but the Sufis they affirm that it is a milk it is a possession of God it is a theater of his manifestation a theater of his manifestation it is the madhar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is that analogically they speak of the, 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 the parable of the mirror uh, supposing there was a there was a king whose countenance is found or rather who who gazes unto a mirror and then within the mirror emerges a certain image we do not say of the image that is perceived in the mirror that it possesses equal existence to the possessor of the image we say that 
the image which is reflected therein is but a theater of the manifestation of that which is real. Uh, so the, the, the metaphysicians, the Sufis, they describe of this world as we see, as we perceive, they do not deny of its existence, but what they, they, they deny of it, or, or rather, but what they affirm of it, of it is that this world is, is but a shadow and, and real. And what do we mean by, 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 by a shadow? That means to say, without the existence of the source of light, without the existence of a particular object that, 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 or, or, upon which the light falls, there will not be a shadow. So that the, the world is described by them as a theater of his manifestation. It is described as a shadow. It is described as a possession of the true and real being. It is also given the dis description, the world as we see it, as a metaphorical existence. Yes, wujud majazi. Why do we say that it is metaphorical in existence? Because its, its existence is dependent on the real being, which is God. And then furthermore, it is also described as relationally existing, what is called wujud idafi. Its existence is dependent on the true source of being. Added with this notion of being and existence of the world, as we see it, is, the, is their affirmation that God um, creates, of course, and his creation rendered all these entities, all the things which are existing, in, a, in abject poverty in relation to God. Because its existence is borrowed at every instant. Yeah? So added to the notion of creation is the notion that uh, perhaps uh, the, the, the theologians might have supported the notion of something like uh, creatio ex nihilo, creation out of nothing. And they further added also the notion of continuous creation and annihilation. But the, 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 the Sufis, while affirming, affirming this, also clarified that this constant creation and annihilation is the, uh, with regards to the individual entities, which are, as we say, subsisting as shadows, as a relational existence, as borrowed existence, that in reality, they do not endure two atoms of time, except that they consist consistently consistently are in need, are in abject poverty of the gift of existence from the truth most exalted or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord. So the truth most exalted creates and destroys, creates and destroys in what is the, the what, what the, the, the metaphysicians call uh, the, the notion of contraction, yes, al-qabd wal-bast, and expansion. So expansion is when uh, the, the, the truth most exalted expands the, 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 the property of being or the property of existence on these individual entities and he then contracts the existence only to give it a new like that. Yes? And it will remain as such for as long as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides. So this is, um, yes, perhaps this might be like a bomb to some of us. But at any rate, uh, Perhaps uh, before we come back again to this, this elaborate account of the, the, what the metaphysicians have described of the reality of nature or the reality of the world, it is also important to point out that uh, uh, Raniri distinguishes between the, the, the account of existence and being um, of the Sufis, the theologians, but he also added the account of the philosophers, the philosopher. And the philosopher, if we trace their historical genealogy of ideas, we will find that uh, some of the ideas that form their metaphysics trace their origins in Aristotle, Plato, and the Neoplatonists, um, chiefly New, uh, Plotinus. The, the account of being and reality, according to the, uh, to the, uh, the philosophers, so to speak, um, if they were to follow the, uh, the emanationist account yes, of the uh, neo Neoplatonists, they affirm that of course, the source of being is God, but, uh, or rather this, this being, this entity, the, 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 the necessarily existing, but yet this being has no control over what is external to itself, meaning to say the, the physical world. The physical world is the result of an emanationist metaphysics, as if, as if it was a, a ray of light, that, that, uh, uh, the ray of light that proceeds eternally from uh, the sun. So basically, the world as we see it is the, 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 the unexpected outcome or the, 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 the outcome 
of the activity of the being like that and the, 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 that original being has no power to to curtail to restrict being unto everything else and this continues although they, they affirm being and becoming that there, there, there are things generating and there are things undergoing corruption but as a whole as the entire system goes every uh, species and 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 uh, an existence of things they continue to subsist and exist uh, eternally aparte ante and eternally aparte post meaning to say eternally without beginning and eternity uh, everlasting like that now so the, the the account which is given in the um uh, in Ar Raniri's metaphysics it challenges the If the, the, the account of uh, 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 so the account of metaphysics given is um, um, by Arraniri, therefore challenges the, the the notion of the philosophers because it returns back again to the uh, uh, to the notion of uh, of of reality as outlined in the Quran. Yes, Sharif Hajar is asking uh, if this is about metaphysics of Islam. What then is the physics of Islam? Uh, of course, the, the the physics of Islam would be, uh, uh, I mean, the nomenclature and the the naming of the sciences is dependent on the on the the, the civilization. Uh, I think that the naming of of of, of uh, the subject matter in Islam would be different from what the uh, the Greeks would 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 proceed because the the the, the Greeks they proceeded from. Uh, from individual entities which they never doubt its its existence and for them the greeks they they affirm that uh, being is that which fills space being is uh, eternal all these things are uh, basically their suppositions their speculations based on affirming the surrounding or rather they, they elaborated their account of metaphysics based on reason and revelation oh no reason and uh, and empiricism without the guidance of revelation, except through remnants of previous teachings. But in the case of the religion of Islam, we already have in the Quran uh, discussions about the nature of the alam, uh, the, na the, the nature of uh, the world. Uh, and the world in, in, in Islam is already described as uh, the created book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That God, as it were, is the author of the, the, the universe. And the universe is to be discerned and to be understood based on the faculties that we have been given. Uh, so within this account, uh, the notion of uh, the world, uh, you know, it, it, it develops from, from that, that Quranic description of, of reality external to you. However, even within the accounts of the Quran, I mean, I remember one time our teachers like, like Dr. Wan Suhaimi mentioned when asked, how is it that the Sufis can arrive at some of these accounts, assuming we... Um, Supposing we don't know uh, what is the content of that intuition, what is the positive content of the intuition, how is it that they can arrive at the conclusion of this uh, continuous creation and annihilation? Isn't it the case that uh, our experience of, of, of time is enduring? Our experience of, of space, our experience of our day-to-day -day experience um, assumes that the world is, is something of a, of a stability. Well, uh, we have certain accounts in the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kullu uh, shay'in halikun. Everything is in a state of perishing, except for God. Or, Kullu man alayha fan. Everything on the plane of existence in a, is in a, in a state of perishing, except uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's countenance. So, although... The, 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 the theologians whose, whose metaphysics and whose epistemology might uh, rest on uh, say day-to-day -day experience might affirm that perhaps that destruction is of the, the ultimate and the final destruction of, of the world before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects everything. But the Sufis who, as we said, un un undergo the spiritual tasting, they will experience it in, in, in a more intense manner, in an, a, a sort of agitating manner, to, uh, uh, or, or a sort of in, internal agitation that they get to experience the creation and the... the, 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 the uh, well, the contraction and the expan expansion of existence at every moment, so to speak, such that while maintaining the, the, the outward meaning of the verses, they undergo a, a, a deeper and, 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 and a more intense form of, of uh, experience of reality and truth. Um, of course, with regards to Tasawuf in the Islamic intellectual tradition, 
um, it wasn't always the case that they were, in a sense, metaphysicians who elaborated uh, 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 an account of metaphysics. If you study, for example, Sheikh Abdul Samad Palembang, he grades or he, he distinguishes between different uh, genres of books on Tasawuf. He mentions, for example, at the um, there are certain books of Tasawuf which is uh, beneficial knowledge to all, which is prerequisite to all, to all higher forms of Tasawuf, uh, and that is Tasawuf understood as uh, religious ethics. And this is, uh, these are, for example, mainly in the writings of, say, the, the Bidayatul Hidayah of Imam al-Ghazali, uh, the books of Imam al-Haddad, like the Risalatul Mu'awana, uh, including the, the, the Ihya also, uh, whose purpose is basically uh, the refinement in this case uh, focuses on, on the, the ethical training of the nafs and how to make oneself more obedient to God. And, and to experience uh, uh, to, 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 to experience um, greater clarity in understanding one's relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At a higher level is the tasawuf of the heart in which he, he includes, for example, the, book, the books written by, say, Ibn Atta'illah as-Sakandari, like the Kitabul Hikam. And also the books of Sheikh Abu Bakar, the book of Sheikh Abu Bakar bin Salim, uh, which is titled the Mi'rajul Arwah. These works deal with the with the reality of the human self, the reality of the human spirit. It deals with the the reality of uh, confronting man and God in terms of an ethical relation. Meaning to say, uh, at this level, the the notion of Tawhid of the Sufis have ascended from the generality of the Muslims. At the level of the generality of the Muslims, we affirm that God is all-powerful, at least theoretically or in reason. We affirm that there will be an afterlife and so on and so forth, which is the foundations of the Aqidah. But the Sufis who ascend to a more elite form of level, I mean to say, to say the Tasawuf of the heart, they begin to see the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of actions. The Tawheed al-Af'al, meaning to say that God is the, the soul efficacy, the sole source of efficacy of everything, that he determines the extent of, of everything which happens at every level. Uh, not even an atom moves except through his command or except through his idin. And they affirm a greater and, and, and closer understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or the relationship between the, the, the human individual and his Lord. This is still at the second level in which uh, Sheikh Abdul Samad Palembang said that it is better to complete and, and focus on the first level uh, before you can, you can ascend to the second level. And what more, as for the third level, uh, it is only for, for the consummate, uh, at least based on the, 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 the scheme of Sheikh Abdul Samad Palembang, out of the fear that uh, first the, the limitations of language and the limitations uh, that, that comes with, with lack of, of training uh, that you might uh, end up being, um, you know, the, that knowledge might end up being detrimental to you rather than beneficial. So at the, at the highest level then, this is Tasawuf as metaphysics. And this is that uh, out of the, 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 the accounts given in this uh, Sufi metaphysics in, 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 in these works, of course, uh, certainly, it, it includes the writings of uh, Ibn Arabi and his commentators, but also some of the writings of Imam al-Ghazali, which has been classified as, 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 as to, to, to discuss this notion of metaphysics, like, like the Mishkatul Anwar, like the uh, several sections of the Ihya, uh, like the Kitab Tawhid wa Tawakkul uh, in the, the, the Ihya, and also, of course, his uh, books, which are classified as Al-Madnun, the one that, that, that is prohibited for those who are not its... Um, uh, its proper recipients, shall we say. So, so therefore, when we discuss uh, the, the, the metaphysics in, in this sense, uh, what is important is to return again to the, the definition of Tasawuf. As, as Professor Naqib al you know, before we want to embark into this elaborate metaphysics, I mean, we might, we might, uh, it might end up being detrimental to ourselves if we forget that the definition of Tasawuf is to practice the Sharia at the level of Ihsan, the practice of the Sharia at the maqam of excellence. And what is this maqam of Ihsan? It is the, the maqam or the station through which a servant worships his Lord as if he were to see him. 
and if he is incapable of doing that, then it is the, the, the worship of the servant that is cognizant always of the Lord's knowledge of himself, his consciousness of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, it is the servant of, of this level of sensitivity uh, that would continuously uh, reflect and continuously perform the, the, the acts of the soul, such as uh, continuous repentance, such as continuous turning towards God, being hopeful, loving God, being endeared to God, and, and so on. Now, it is to, to such a being, who, uh, to such a person who's lived his life in affirmation of religious truth that such gifts were given. And they are the ones who then, upon their return from the intuition of existence, the, the, the experience of reality at the higher level, they return then to, 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 to pen their works to describe what then is this, the metaphysical structure? What is the, the, the notion of that which is true and real? What is this, the nature of the reality that confronts us? Yes, because look at the analogical case of the person who affirms only the existence of reality based on sense experience. They would be amazed to find out the, the findings of the, the scientists, for example, who affirm, say, the existence of the, uh, the subatomic particles, the, 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 the levels of, of nature whose effects are, are, are seen, but whose source is not seen. It is only predicated through, say, scientific modeling or mathematical modeling. You predicate the existence of such beings. But yet, in, in, in terms of sense experience, if we were told that, we would be amazed. Uh, but this is only an, an, an aspect of reality which is disclosed to, uh, to, to, to a, a properly trained scientist. Uh, the metaphysician now in this case is a person who, who also has to undergo tests. But he is a person, she is a person who has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that intuition. So, basically, um, that account of metaphysics that we have been, that we have tried to, to, to sketch, yes, um, you know, the contraction, uh, the notion of the, 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 uh, the wajibul wujud, yes, the, the true existence and ours as, as relative existence and so on, does not negate, certainly, the truth and the reality of religion. Professor Naqib al certainly mentions in the, uh, in the chapter on religion that the Sufis who have who have experienced this this higher uh, this higher notion of reality when they return to their to their uh, to their uh, conscious selves they will persist in their worship of god because the knowledge of that experience remains with them and they they continuously beseech god to 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 maintain their heart in 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 in, in its proper place of obedience to god of course, uh, remember that Professor, uh, Professor Wan Muhammad Noor wrote this uh, chapter, uh, Metaphysical Worldview, um, not only with metaphysics in mind. He is writing a first chapter of a, a book on educational philosophy and practice. Why is, this, um, why is this metaphysical discussion? How is it relevant to, an ed to educational theory? We say because first, modern education has lost its metaphysical moorings. If you lose the notion of reality and truth that can disclose to you what is your ultimate values, meaning to say what is most important in life, what ought to be the, the aim of education, then education will mean a, a sort of exercise, a sort of practice that merely say actualizes certain types of potentials which is relevant to the technological, industrial, economic society. So therefore, you will focus the, the entire educational process on actualizing, uh, say, mathematical skills, technological skills, the ability to, uh, to handle and to deal with uh, the, the, the disruptive economy that we, uh, that we live in today, and so on and so forth. Or, or if you cannot give that, then at least you give the promise of, of success. So that's, that's the, the, the notion of education today. Or perhaps another school of education will, uh, will consider that the purpose of education is to disrupt the, the, the present order, how to challenge, um, uh, how to challenge the hegemony of the, 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 the present uh, structure. Or an education may, may be designed in a, in a humanistic manner, 
to promote, say for example, the aesthetic taste and so on and so forth. But all these notice the, in, 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 in these philosophies of education, their account of metaphysics is in a sense empty. Yes, it, it, their, their metaphysics doesn't give them value, doesn't give them what ought to be, uh, uh, what ought we to struggle for and to strive in life. But as for Islamic metaphysics, when we mention that the, 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 the most important element in the metaphysics of Islam is the existence of God, and God is then the source of our value, because God determines and, 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 and explains to us what is the purpose of existence for us. And that our, our existence has a moral purpose. It is to become his vicegerent on earth. Our existence is to, to, to carry and shoulder the burden of trust of being his vicegerent. And the, the being of man is also certainly part and parcel of this metaphysics. Because man, we affirm, is not just an animal. Uh, but man possesses, as we said just now in the, in the epistemological account that we have briefly given, man possesses a, a spiritual organ of cognition called the heart. And his happiness is dependent on his ability to purify his heart. And his being on earth is to promote uh, sustainability, certainly, uh, ecological safety, certainly, because these are signs, yes? The world is, these are signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left behind. This book of creation uh, is still the, the product of Allah, uh, of God. And it is, it is through the, 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 the school of the world that we come to know, or through the veil of creation, we come to know the Creator better and become more appreciative and coming to return to the uh, to our purpose of existing. Uh, Professor Sapora here is asking, can it be given to the theologians and philosophers? And number two, spiritual unveiling, can it be painful and disturbing to some Sufis? Uh, there are, uh, shall we say, um, Prof. Alatas was talking about intuition. Um, in Islam and the philosophy of science, and in several other parts, uh, and in several other of his writings, he talks about how some notion of intuition is given to men of science and learning, uh, which of course may include the theologians and philosophers, but this pertains to a, a specific aspect of reality. For example, a mathematician who has, has long laboured um, uh, trying to 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 to, uh, to arrive at uh, say to to prove. A, a theorem, for example, after having trained his capacity for it, his imagination for it, and having laboured, may arrive at, at, at that as, as a result of a sudden burst of imaginative brilliance. And, and, and we have documented cases of, uh, of, of such intuition happening to, say, men of science and learning, and sometimes even uh, musical virtuosos and, and so on and, 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 and so forth, people who are experts, even in military strategy, for example, report from time to time given an intuition about things. And, uh, of course, the philosophers also, you know, those who labor a lot about the notion of, uh, say, justice, those who think about the, 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 the meaning of, say, uh, 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 you know, uh, political strategy and so on and so forth, may arrive at this very specific uh, aspect of intuition. However, the, 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 the intuition that, that Professor Nakib Alatas is talking about that is given to the prophets, that is given to men of God, like the awliya, now this, uh, this is a different type. Uh, this is of a higher nature because it, it unveils to them uh, the notion of reality and truth. It, it gives them the, the answer to the question of what is the entire, entirety of existence all about. Uh, the experience... Uh, um, certain internal experience with, with God, yes. As for the spiritual unveiling, Al-Kashf, can it be painful and disturbing to some Sufis? Uh, of course, Prof. Alatas has, uh, has used the term, you know, in his writing as uh, agitation. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the Quran, um, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha. God will not burden a soul with more than what it can bear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know just the right amount of knowledge that a soul can bear uh, before he grants uh, that, that, that kind of knowledge. And uh, another case, of course, is reported, uh, is, is written in Prophet Latas' Intuition of Existence, in which it is mentioned there that uh, Dhul Nun al-Misri said, Do not grieve for the one who is lost to existence. 
um, uh, because you know at at um, supposing periods of being unveiled and then maybe from time to time that experience does not return that may cause such, uh, uh, sudden grief also and this i'm not talking about the the, the higher sufis wallahu a'lam what what they feel based on their accounts i, I mean even people who are regular worshippers those who are ardent and and peaceful servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the beloved uh, worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they too know that from time to time their, their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they felt very close they, they, they felt the, 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 the beauty of the, the, the pining and, and the longing but uh, at, at times that experience is, is lost to them so that can be painful and disturbing certainly yes we have come to uh, I think at about the, the, the end of the first hour if you have any questions uh, you may write them here. I, I will try to answer them. I cannot answer Muhammad Yusra's question though. Why is the video buffering? Any other questions? Is there a method or procedure that one must go through to arrive at the experience of intuition of existence? Uh, when um, this book was written, the, the, the Prolegomena to the Metaphysics of Islam, and even before that, when he wrote the um, positive aspects of Tasawuf, Mm. at least in its written form uh, the intention wasn't to highlight the um, necessarily I say wasn't to, 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 to highlight um, how this intuition of existence is to be practiced until you reach uh, that, that experience uh, but um, if you are asking now about a method or procedure that one must go through um, this would be found in his axiological writings like the meaning and experience of happiness in Islam meaning and experience of happiness in Islam there is contained you will find that Professor Naqib al affirms the method of uh, Imam al-Ghazali uh, the, the methods of Imam al-Ghazali you know, the, the methods of mujahada the method of, of, of um, living yourself your, your entire life in the, in the experience of submission to God uh, but will that method guarantee an intuition of existence that ultimately is, 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 is left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is left to God? Because uh, even within the, that chapter, Intuition of Existence, Professor al mentions that there are several levels uh, through which a person experiences these things um, and uh, of the, the, the limited type and of the more superior type based on the khawasul khawas and so on. And people of the past, I mean, how they were able to do that. I mean, if you look at the, the, the mujahada of, of the likes of Sheikh uh, Junaid al-Baghdadi, sure, I mean, his, his, his writings are, are theoretically brilliant. I mean, if you, if you look at his, his uh, epistles, for example. But we know also that these were not people who were, who were free from amal. I mean, they were people who, 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 who get to the higher regions based on their worship of God. I, I remember that uh, in Imam Al Ghazali's Ayyuhal Walad, it is mentioned there that uh, Junaid was asked, I mean, by a person who saw him in a dream after his uh, passing, he said, What was the case with you, um, O Abul Qasim? Junaid al Baghdadi, Rahimahullah, Qaddasallahu Sirrah, he mentions that, Well, Tahat tilkal ibarat, and this ibarat, this isharat, uh, these were not the things that saved us, he said, but uh, it was the Rukai'at. It was the, 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 the superrogatory prayers that we pray at night. Uh, and also, uh, of course, the strongest support of, of, of the, pra the, the, the practice of tasawuf as, as a means to arrive at the, the, the experiences. Although the, the intention ought not to be uh, the, 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 ex the experience of the intuition of existence, is uh, the, the hadith, the saying of the Prophet, in which the, prophets, uh, in, in which in the hadith Qudsi Allah said, 
um, my servant comes close to me or approaches me by performing the duties, the religious duties that I have set upon him. And he will not cease to come closer to me through the supergatory ibadat. Uh, of course, by, by that is also meant to protecting and desisting from, uh, from anything that would anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this, this sort of gifts is, is given to the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, uh, it is not given uh, unless the person is tested, unless the person is sincere and honest. And um, as Imam al-Haddad would write in his writings, he, he, was, he was saying that Talabul uh, uh, Kashaf, the, 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 the seeking of unveiling, uh, is one of the weaknesses of the student. I mean, to say it is, it is one of the, the, the means through which people slip uh, on, on the path. And Imam al-Haddad, despite not elaborating the intuition of existence into a, 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 a positive scientific account, we know that, uh, for example, in his writings that talks about higher metaphysics, even I indicated in, in, uh, in, in the Risalatul Mu'awana, for example, that he was saying that the higher, the higher experience of dhikr, he was saying, is al-fana fil madhkur. It is to be obliterated. It is to be uh, uh, obliterated in the being that you're contemplating. Now that uh, already shows or is indicative of the higher stations, except that the, the, the method that is uh, preferred by the Haba'i, preferred by the Ba'alawis, is to, uh, to bury the secrets from within their bosoms. They, they do not disclose it. And you look at how Professor Nakib Alatas also, when, when he writes uh, about metaphysics, uh, first, it, it, it is not known that he has ever lectured on the last three chapters of the Prolegomena to the Metaphysics of Islam publicly. Uh, he only talks about the, the matter of these things to, to some of his close students, and that too in, in private gatherings like with, with Professor Wan, Professor Zaini. Um, he may mention some aspects of that. Uh, so the purpose of writing the, the, the Metaphysics of Islam, and, and when he writes in this book, the, the author's note, he's saying that the teachers of Islamic, uh, the, the religion of Islam, the teachers of science in this time, we must acquaint ourselves with this metaphysics. And why is it that we must acquaint ourselves with this metaphysics? So that we can, we can build our philosophy of science, our philosophy of education on sturdy foundations. Yes. And as for the, the intuition of existence, that is left to existence to determine. Yes. All that we can, we can advise is, is for us to try to be the best Muslims that we can be. What's the significant difference between the notion of prime mover and scheme of emanation? And why the Islamic philosophers were regarded as Aristotelian Neoplatonists? Are they combining the two? Um, well, in some of your questions, uh, in some of the questions, some of, uh, are found some of the answers. First, the notion of uh, uh, prime mover was thought about by uh, Aristotle as a result of his uh, metaphysics of form and matter or hylomorphism. Remember Aristotle had this notion of uh, um, he called uh, fourfold causal spectacles that for every being to exist it must have a material cause it must have a, a formal cause, it, might ha it must have an efficient cause, and it must have a final cause. Now the formal cause is, is the matter out of which a substance is. Like say, uh, supposing we're talking about the being of the chair, the material cause would be the wood out of which is made the tree, uh, is made the chair. Then you have the, uh, the formal, uh, which is the form that the chair takes. The efficient cause is the maker of the chair. And the maker of the chair is the one that, that, make, that, that transforms the chair uh, from potentiality to actuality. And then there is the, the final cause. The final cause is the telos, the purpose of the existence of the, the chair, which is uh, to function as an object for the human seated form, shall we say. Now, that's, now within the scheme of hylomorphism, Aristotle 
uh, notes that there are certain uh, there are certain things which are purely matter and and there are certain things which are a composition between the two and there are certain things which are pure form and that which is pure form is the uh, the the prime mover the the pure form is the cause of everything that exists shall we say how is this different from the scheme of emanation uh, Aristotle did not get to elaborate on, on, on his theory of creation, although ontologically he posited the existence of the prime mover. The, the, the elaboration of the scheme of emanation ca ca came later with the, the Neoplatonists, in particular Plotinus. Now he developed the scheme of emanation, basically on the notion that there is, say, the one being out of which flows the mind and out of which flows other things. So from this, this is where, uh, uh, so from this, the tradition of Platonism and, and Arist Aristotelianism gradually became fused and became, uh, shall we say, it became more and more uh, interrelated, especially because uh, Neoplatonists are Aristotelians in a certain extent. Plotinus certainly was. So, or meaning to say they were free to use some of the ideas of Aristotle within the Platonic, within dogmatic uh, Platonism. So by the time the, the, these books were translated into Arabic from Greek and from Syriac, that tradition of Neoplatonism uh, and Aristotelianism had already been fused. And also uh, some of the, the historians of philosophy, historians of ideas, they mentioned that uh, that's the cause. Uh, the, the, the cause of the confusion was that the theology of, uh, or the, rather the writings of Plotinus got confused to be uh, it was ascribed as the uh, as the theology of Aristotle, so that's how gradually it became. Um, by the time it got to the systems of Al Farabi, uh, Ibn Sina, and Al Kindi, um, uh, these uh, as it formed. I mean, as the elements of Neoplatonic Aristotelianism form part of um, uh, for part of their systematic metaphysics. Therefore, they became labeled Neoplatonic Aristotelians. But I don't think that that's uh, a fair description of the Islamic philosophers because the Islamic philosophers were not merely Neoplatonian and Neoplatonic Aristotelianism and this naming already reflects uh, the, 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 the tendency of the Western mind uh, to, to, to say that uh, the, the Muslims they, they merely inherited from the tradition of the Greeks uh, in truth of course they were more free to develop their own account Now, Brother Hussam, can effect a reconciliation between Muslim theology and philosophy, just as it has achieved a great measure of understanding and unity uh, between Sunnism and Shiism. Yes, uh, if you look at the account given by Sheikh Nuruddin Ar Raniri in the uh, in the Hujjah to Siddiq, in which Professor Nakib Al Atas commented upon, he did say that in reality, the the account of metaphysics given by the Sufis. And given by the, the, the theologians, although they, they differ uh, with some important, meaningful differences, but yet it maintains the relative places of things. In the extent that um, either you conceive of the world as, it, uh, as uh, a contingent existence, whose existence came about as a result of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if you were to supplement this notion of, of reality of the theologians, with their, their theory of, of atoms and accidents and continuous creation, then you'll get very close to the notion of uh, the metaphysical Sufis that talk about uh, uh, wujud idafi and, and, and uh, I mean, it's a relational existence, uh, being borrowed of existence and metaphorical existence. Uh, meaning to say that there's also, although there's, there's relevant differences, but yet it does not, I mean, the metaphysics will not necessarily draw a wedge between these two notions of reality except for those perhaps who, who, who purposely look for the, the, the I mean these are this is where Prophet Lata said that the, 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 in the history of the intellectual tradition of Islam the two schools uh, which are relevant in terms of metaphysics are the essentialists and the existentialists but in, in, in either metaphysics you affirm based on your inclination, your experience and your studies either ways will still put God at the center of the of, of, of your understanding of metaphysics, uh, it will still re-establish the role of the human being as servant to God. Um, that's for the the first part.
and achieving a great measure of understanding and unity between Sunnism and Shiism, well, in the second part, it is because the, the primary differences between uh, the two, um, shall we say, Madahib, um, uh, the, 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 the Sunnism and Shiism, provided we are not talking about the extremes, yes, is that, um, of course, they differ in terms of um, election of the Imam, uh, and they differ also perhaps on, on certain uh, Sahaba and, and, and several aspects. Uh, 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 this was already debated upon by, by the theologians of the past. But where greater unity can be achieved uh, in, in terms of Islamic metaphysics or intellectual Sufism is that we have seen uh, how um, the, the, the Sunni theological scheme or the school of Islamic metaphysics have influenced, I mean the Sunni, uh, the, which was practiced by the Sunnis, have influenced the accounts of metaphysics given by the Shi'is. And uh, for example, amongst the later Shi'is, uh, who are metaphysically inclined, like Mullah Sadra, their notions, uh, I mean the, the, his, his description of reality uh, with regards to um, uh, some of the elaboration of the theory of wujud, um, at least and on that plane, we do not differ. For example, on, on the primacy of existence, on the notion of the Ihdatul Alam, his explanation behind the renewal of, of, of particulars, the renewal of the world, these things we, we do not uh, necessarily uh, disagree. And, and that the world is, is, the, is the created word, word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it can affect a greater degree of uh, understanding. It might not necessarily mean uh, uh, reconciliation in, in the total sense because that would, would obliterate all differences altogether. But at the very least, you will, you will affirm a, a similar account of, of, of metaphysics that will keep intact at least the ethical structure. Where does this intuition actually fall? In which category of knowledge channel? If you were to base on Al-Nasafi's channel of knowledge. Well, uh, if you look at Taftazani's commentary on uh, Al-Nasafi, he will mention that... Um, Al-Nasafi mentions that ilham or intuition is not a source of knowledge. But on Taftazani's uh, comment to that, he mentions that um, he clarifies that rejection of uh, of ilham as a, as a source of knowledge but supposing we want to maintain the, the, the three channels of knowledge within that structure can we affirm the existence of uh, an intuition as a source of knowledge then we can we can uh, uh, we can elaborate the account of uh, reason yes what do we mean by uh, al aqal yes that ak the aqal for example uh, despite having the uh, uh, the functions of uh, systematizing uh, the data of experience and also uh, having several of its functions which has been described is also part and parcel of the heart which is the spiritual organ of cognition so there is is the the, the intu uh, where where the intuition lies any other question No more questions then, I suppose. Okay. Inshallah, um, for those who perhaps want to um, want to explore some of these questions further, um, I would certainly recommend that you read uh, Pro Professor Wan's book, Educational Philosophy and Practice of Professor Nakib Alatas. Uh, you can also read uh, Prolegomena to the Metaphysics of Islam by Professor Nakib Alatas. 
um, and certainly within the the space of um, an hour or so, this this will not be able to do proper justice to the discussion of metaphysics and Islam. Um, the better route would be to go through a, a, a proper course, certainly, uh, like um, you know, like what we have been through in 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 cases where you would go through you know uh, the, the the proper discipline of knowledge that you would study, for example, the basic foundations of the Sharia. You would study uh, texts in Aqidah. You would study texts in the tradition of Tasawuf, its development, and so on. Gradually, and um, and together with the the, the the direction and the and the patient explanation of the teachers, you'd be able, inshallah, to to tackle on some of these things. These are highly abstract matters, I I should say, and um, I apologize also for the uh, for the lack of clarity on some of these things. At any rate, I suppose if there are no more questions, then we'll keep it at that. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.